um, here's my formula the... for something I've never made before. Uh, if you watch my videos, I am famous for experimenting, which means some of them are absolutely god awful. There was one. I, I have made some terrible products. Oh, that's the only one uh, but I, that I know of. Those aren't our you, containers. That part of this business is fun that you're going to experiment with something new and just say, well, that combination doesn't work. So uh, Paula's niece was at a store uh, over in Jupiter and found these uh, toasted coconut uh, cookies. They're very thin and they're just loaded with flavor. And I said, that will make a great ice cream. And then let's add a, a chocolate swirl to it. And so I said, great, we'll go out and get some Hershey's and squirt it in. And Christy said, uh, Steve, you are so low class. We'll go get your Giadelli. And so this is the chocolate that Jeff recommends. You know, this started off as a small company on Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. And now you have a great website and you can buy all sorts of great products from it. Giadelli is really fantastic stuff. So we're going to squirt that in as it's made. Uh, let's see. First, we need three and a half quarts of mix. This mix that we're using is the Meadowvale Clean Label Mix. This is 16% butter fat. What Jeff was using is 10%, which is what normally we stick with here down in the south. Because if you have a high butter fat here in the south, it's kind of heavy, it makes you sick, you're, it's really hot here, everybody knows how that goes. There is a data sheet in your booklet that has the information about this clean label. A lot of customers I've been hearing, they want to be natural, they want to have no artificial ingredients, they don't want any preservatives. Well, Meadowvale, once again, has succeeded and made a clean label. So the ingredients are on that sheet and it's a really great product. The all natural is really important wherever you can do it. You can't always do it. Uh, but, I mean, if you're gonna make uh, bubble oh, gum so Italian good. ice, uh, I tell people our bubblegum trees here in Florida got blown down in the last hurricane, so we can't get, you know, we can't go out and pick bubblegum off the trees. So we have to use an artificial bubblegum extract. So if that's something that you want to make for the kids, that's fine. Uh, but people will know what it is that you're making. But anytime you can do natural is great. I don't like uh, a chemical My called uh, polysorbate 80. I don't like multidextrin. Uh, these are both horrible chemicals. But I have no problem with guar gum. Guar is a gum. Uh, carrageenan is seaweed. Uh, if you need to preserve the length of the product, uh, I see nothing wrong with that at all. You can go down the, the purest level to where it drives you crazy. One lady told me my cane sugar wasn't pure because I wasn't going down to the Virgin Islands and, and shucking my own cane and then scraping the sugar out of it. So you, you can go overboard. It is. Because I used to shuck... Yes, uh, I know. I have pictures of you on the plantation. I was, well, I wasn't, I was in a, a big factory. So what's, the, what's the difference in price between the key label one and the traditional one? Is, is there a big difference? No, no, no. It's just the process. It's, it's all going to run you about 50 bucks for two bladders. Okay. See, the dairies were trying to make a product uh, uh, that th they could put on the shelf for months and months. And, and the old-fashioned way of doing it was with chemicals. Now what they do is you make a clean label and they're doing uh, ultra-high temperature pasteurization. Uh, I can buy milk now. If I buy regular supermarket milk, it's going to be bad in about 10 days or less. Uh, I can buy organic milk now, which I prefer, and it's got a 35 or 40 day shelf life. It was ultra high temperature pasteurized. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the trend that we're going. We're going, we're making a giant step backwards to my grandparents where the quality of the product is better than it's been in years. I mean, it's, it's amazing and, it, and it's the way to go. So I'm gonna pour in the mix. I found that if you rest the, the bucket on the lid like this, it's gonna tend to spill. But if you raise it up a little bit, you won't spill anything. Now I'm blind in one eye, so if I can do this, you won't have, you'll have much less trouble than me. But that's the little secret. Instead of putting it down here, raise it up a little bit. Funny story, so I got into the habit of pouring mix in like that, right? So my husband and I, a couple weeks ago or so, he was pouring a shot and I was holding a vodka bottle up here, a pie, and he goes, it's not an Emory Thompson, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a mess everywhere. <laughs> we hired uh, Christy's uh, husband, Mickey. He's an engineer. And uh, that's helping us to expand the business even more. So we, we've always said we're a family business. Now we're a multifamily business. Yep. 
That's very true. Um, my formula. So now I'm going to add uh, some two ounces of vanilla, and I'm actually going to measure it because one way or the other, I am paying for it. Where's the? Oh. And I don't want it. I want to have it exact. So every single batch, whether it's today or five years from now, if you taste this and I made it. Uh, it will be the so same. You're saying that my yes, I am. It wasn't a uh, true five ounces. Oh, who knows what it was? <laughs> I think it was probably a lot more because you said it was free. There is no free. <laughs> there is no free. Nope. Nope. Okay, two ounces. Right in like that. Always use plastic in your ice cream room. You could buy. You could buy this in Pyrex and uh, glass. And if you dropped it, it'll break in two pieces. You could put them back together. You say, no harm, no foul. I can't take the risk as a business owner. Uh, even though I've got a dust guard there, if I broke, and if you've ever broken a wine glass in your house, you know that when you drop it, it shatters. So you're picking up shards in the kitchen and, in, and the living room and the dining room. Uh, the Pyrex in glass is only going to break in two pieces. But if you don't have glass in the room, you never have to worry about it. So even though that's closed and this is plastic, if I broke a glass here, I would dump this batch. I just wouldn't want to take the risk. So the best way not to uh, have any risk is only use plastic. Now we'll start this up. Uh, I am going to go to make ice cream. I'm going to hit homemade. You have a series of choices here. This is my invention of 22 years ago. I call it the infinite overrun control. And basically, um, if you uh, take a bucket of heavy cream and pour it in this bucket and stir it by hand, it's going to remain heavy cream. If I take an electric mixer and put it in here, it's going to blow up to whipped cream. So the slower you turn, the less air you put in the product. So this machine and none other on the market can do uh, homemade, or I can slow it down to super premium, I can slow it down to uh, dairy-free, I can slow it even slower to gelato, frozen custard is uh, the lowest speed, we also have yogurt in there. And then we have Italian ice, sorbet, sorbetto, frozen lemonade, cream ice, sherbet, manual speed, and all that is for not when you talk to an executive chef, because they know more than anybody on earth, I hope there's no executive chefs here, uh, they don't care what I've preset it at. They want to be able to do it themselves. If I'm running at 160, they want 158. So we accommodated them on that too, and we have uh, a manual setting where you can just tap it down. So I've got my mix in here. I'm going to hit homemade and start, and refrigeration. And my timer has started on the machine, so I know what's going on, yes. Yes, Steve, thank you. On, on the air content overrun, Jason, that, can you give us a brief explanation of how that affects the texture, taste, creaminess of the ice cream? Um, the less air, the more dense the ice cream. So a lot of people come in here and they say, um, I understand that uh, Haagen-Dazs is 45% overrun. I want 35% overrun. Okay, we can do that, but there's trade-offs to everything. Uh, this has an X amount of cost, this bag of mix. If I can put uh, two and a half gallons into a machine or three gallons in and get six back, that's uh, cutting my cost in half. So if this costs $10 of mix, now it costs me $5 of ice cream. So that's a key factor. The other and more important thing is when I make uh, a maximum air content ice cream, again, nobody ever walked out of an ice cream parlor and said, you know what, that's the best damn air content I ever ate. You know, they just don't do it. Or I love the fat content that Jeff's running. It's, it's just wonderful. They don't say that. They say, wow, that mint chip of Steve's was really minty and the chips weren't chalky. Uh, they eat flavor. The other two are background noise. Basically in air, it's the difference between a birthday cake and a pound cake. A pound cake is low air content ice cream, a birthday cake is high air content. And I ask any one of you, who wants to go back and get a second piece of pound cake? Do you want me to have the no. whole bag? Um, do you have the other bag? It's right there, you just opened yeah. it. Yeah, Christy's gonna just- Whole bag? Whole bag. Christy's gonna throw the cookies in, the machine's gonna grind them up, and there's my flavor right there. Uh, that, that's it, nothing else is needed. Um, so, 
you, uh, low air content ice cream is going to be very dense. Uh, let me show you. Um, what'd you say that was? Five ounces? 5.5. Okay, that's a 5.5 ounce cup. If I fill that up, it's going to, at a high air content, it's going to be falling out of the cup. I'm going to feel like I got my, that's five dollars. I feel like I really got my money's worth uh, for that ice cream. If I do a low air content ice cream, it's going to fill it a, a little more than halfway or a little less than halfway. Wow, I paid five bucks for that. You know, the, the, the perceived value isn't there. But the real thing that Haagen-Dazs and Ben and & Jerry found out, and Haagen-Dazs went full force and closed all their stores. Ben & Jerry still has a couple open. They say only for advertising purposes. They, they like their name out there. But all those stores closed. They failed. And they failed because the ice cream is so dense, the portion looks small, the price is high, and as you eat it, you start to get really full. And they noticed that outside their store was a garbage can and it was filling up with half-eaten cups because the stuff lay like lead in your stomach. Now, it has a place. It's terrific in pints. I like a lower air content in pints because you're taking it home and you don't care what it costs. I don't care if it's seven, eight, nine dollars. I'm going to buy a pint for myself and I'm going to buy a pint for my wife, Paula, because I can't come home with a, you know, without a pint for her. Uh, and I'm going to pick at it. I'm going to have a little when I first get home, some after dinner, a small portion because we just had a nice meal, and at 10.30 at night I'm stealing another portion. So you, you pick away at it. Uh, but it is, it's, it's looking at, you, gotta, you can't just say, I'm a purist and I want this. You have to say, I'm a purist and can I sell this? Yes? No, just to add on to that question. So can you set a particular percentage of them, like let's say 40% on the machine or how? We, I can get, um, you alter it by just changing the speed. So uh, homemade is 100% overrun. Uh, I've got it set at um, super premium, I think is 60 or 65. Gelato is about 45. Uh, custard, is, uh, yeah, frozen custard is about 35. And that's as low as you can go. Because uh, milk, and, and anybody tells you, oh, our ice cream has no air in it. They have no clue what they're talking about. Just walk away from them, they have no idea. Because this is mainly water. I mean, it's in the form of milk, but it's water. And if you take water and you freeze it, if you have a wood boat in Lake Michigan and, that, and freeze over the lake, that boat's gonna get crushed because water expands 17%. Hmm? I said it smells good. Oh, good. 17% <laughs> is 34% overrun. So below 34% overrun, unless you're sealing the system off, can't happen. Uh, certainly not in a batch for you. Um, so you're always going to have air in ice cream. Italian ices only expand a, a small amount because there's no dairy in it. Dairy-free doesn't expand very much. But dairy, but dairy is fat cells, and they, just like cream, they, they explode up. Yes? Good question. What? When you turn on the freezer, as a point, and when we phrase that, when, how would you know, how would you decide when you turn on the freezer and then throw in those crackers, or throw in while it's still spinning? It's always spinning. It's spinning from... When the ice cream gets a, when the ice cream gets a little thicker, a third of the way through the, the process, you can see it getting a little thicker, then if you add things, the integrity will be sustained in, when it comes out. If you add them in the beginning, it'll crush everything up. If, if you add them a third of the way through, when the ice cream is thickening, it'll maintain the snappy and the cracky and the poppy. It depends on the ingredient going in. Chocolate chips are never going to change. These cookies here, dust. As soon as it hits the beaters, it's going to grind them up. So that in the dairy is going to be a fantastic flavor, but that's why I'm going to throw in pieces of cookie at the end. This is my fruit flavor. This is my identity. Oh, these are good. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> well, you were eating them. No, I didn't. I didn't have one. Um, so I'm just checking it, see how it looks. It's been six minutes and 42 seconds. Question, yeah. On this subject of adding things in, maybe of the way through or whatever to maintain the integrity of the pretzel of the work. 
maybe it's because I've had some cheap ice cream that was really old, but sometimes some of those items, like the cereal or something, after they've been in the freezer, they almost come out chewy instead of crunchy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, it, and it's disgusting. We, you, we have, that? you can't improve on it. We have tried. Jeff has made different cereals. Some cereals work, uh, others don't. Uh, grape nuts work great because they're little hard right. you know, nuggets. But uh, uh, Cocoa Puffs, uh, Captain Crunch, none of them worked. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. The Cinnamon Toast, Toast Crunch. They were great when it came out of the machine. Everybody goes, yay, it's terrific. But then the, the day later, it's just like eating you know, dough. It was, it was awful. Cool. It was one of the hard. We've tried so many different ways. Have you the had only, any success, The only Jeff? real way to combat that is at the serving point. If you're making Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which is a great flavor in ice cream, Great flavor. So keep a, a bucket of those on the counter, and when they're scooping cinnamon toast crunch, put some on top. That's yeah. That's the only way to get around that. You have to take my class. I'm gonna need another one of those. Not ready yet. So this is the next best thing to a squeezy uh, or a squishy thing. This is the Giardelli sea salt caramel. And uh, it comes with a little, um, what did they call it in the spout. center here? Looks like a squeeze spout, or you can do it. It has a valve in it. Ketchup yeah. or mustard bottles, those work. This is a squeeze <laughs> valve in it, so as you pour, it's going to help push it, squeeze it out, and it's going to give you a, a nice uh, ribbon of, pu of putting it in. And so that's the way we're going to do the variegate, is I'm going to put a little bit in the bottom of the container for there. And then um, as it comes out, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to slow the drive down so that I can uh, have more time to work with it. Uh, so you don't need to buy a $3,500 door uh, as an accessory like another company tried. I'm just going to, look, I hear it? I can just tap that speed down to whatever I want. It's a simple idea. Uh, the invention, but it's an invention because nobody's ever done it before. You can't just take a light dimmer and put it onto a machine because your motor loses all its power, all its what we call torque or, or pulling power. When I lower the speed of this, that motor is still the same strength. And this has been around coming up on 23 years, uh, my invention. I did this back in the Bronx. Some people like the, go ahead. You mean in the same cabinet? No, you have to make you have to decide what overrun you're going to do and stay there. Sure. Now, only a supermarket can sell premium cheeses and store bought cheeses. Uh, you have to have the highest quality level that you want, and, and that's what you sell. In fact, I was talking with a fireman who I'm putting into business, and he said, what if I make a cheaper product uh, for my fire company uh, to give out it when we're doing fundraisers? And I said, I had a boss that said, if you're going to sell a product, only sell your very best. Don't give away the ice cream to the fire department or the police department or the church at a lower quality level because it's your reputation that's talking all day long. You build, you make only the best, and, and that's what you sell. You ready? We don't have lesser brands of Emory Thompson. You want to pull it? Ready? You okay. Pull? Now I'm going to slow it down. And if you'll open that part way, I'll get this a little faster. A little faster. Look what's going on. Okay, shut off. Look, see how beautiful mine was? Now, if you'll level that out for me. Thank you. I think I would have preferred your other bottle. But this works. Okay. Now, if you don't have two people, what you can do is just take out about a half a gallon and... Um, then squeeze it in and use a spatula. You can shut that off. A little more over here. 
and then I'll top it off. Top it off? Oh, top it off? No, I'm gonna just take oh. a little more. Why waste time? Feel this. Spread that out a little. Great. The, okay. other, the other container is above the. Yeah, I'll just do that separately. Okay. And that's what we have. It's a beautiful looks thing. Looks pretty good. Whoa. Yeah, it still looks Sammy, good on the Stella. floor. <laughs>